Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. and rose on high, who came eternal life to bring, who lives no more to die. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. The Mass this morning is offered for Don Atkinson. We come before the Lord uh, aware that he is king and ruler of our life, asking forgiveness for our sinfulness. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things, which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promise which surpasses every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Judges. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abezerite. While his son Gideon was beating out weed in the winepress to save it from the Midianites, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O champion. Gideon said to him, My Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are his wondrous deeds of which our fathers told us when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? For now the Lord has abandoned us and has delivered us into the power of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and save Israel from the power of Midian. It is I who send you. But Gideon answered him, Please, my Lord, how can I save Israel? My family is the lowliest in Manasseh, and I am the most insignificant in my father's house. I shall be with you, the Lord said to him, and you will cut down Midian to the last man. Gideon answered him, If I find favor with you, give me a sign that you are speaking with me. Do not depart from here, I pray you, until I come back to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. He answered, 
I will await your return. So Gideon went off and prepared a kid and a measure of flour in the form of unleavened cakes. Putting the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot, he brought them out to him under the terebinth and presented them. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and unleavened cakes and lay them on this rock, then pour out the broth. When he had done so, the angel of the Lord stretched out the tip of the staff he held and touched the meat and unleavened cakes. Thereupon a fire came up from the rock that consumed the meat and unleavened cakes, and the angel of the Lord disappeared from sight. Gideon, now aware that it had been the angel of the Lord, said, Alas, Lord God, that I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. The Lord answered him, Be calm, do not fear, you shall not die. So Gideon built there an altar to the Lord and called it Yahweh Shalom. The word of the Lord. The response is, the Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people and to his faithful ones and to those who put in him their hope. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him, and salvation along the way of his steps. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus Christ became poor although he was rich so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia. Oh, may the Lord be in your heart, our lips, and my proclaim so gospel worthy and well in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for the sake of my name, will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord.
The first reading today is interesting. It's uh, about Gideon. Uh, Gideon probably, remember Mayberry RFD on TV? He's kind of a combination of Gomer and Goober. You know, he's, he's about that kind of, he's about that sharp. So uh, he says he's the least, the most insignificant person of his father's tribe. Uh, isn't it the first time God picked absolutely, I mean, God went down to the bottom of the barrel. He picked the most unlikely person he could possibly find to uh, lead uh, the Jews against the Midianites. The context of this is, this is in the, uh, the time after the Exodus from Egypt. They've settled in the Promised Land. Exodus in Egypt is about 1260 or 1280 BC. There's a period of the judges until about 1050 BC when uh, Saul is elected as made king. So there are 12 judges. I guess it's obvious I used to teach scripture. Uh, but during this time, uh, there were the Midianites. And the Midianites were uh, people who domesticated the camel. Uh, we ran into the Midianites earlier when the brothers sold Joseph. They sold Joseph to a caravan of Midianites that were going to Egypt uh, carrying uh, uh, gum for incense that was considered a very precious commodity in ancient times. So uh, the Midianites, what, what the Midianites would do is after harvest time, they would sweep down and they would steal most of the harvest. They would leave just enough behind to allow the Jews to, to survive until the next year. So they would try and hide their animals and their grain and all that from the Midianites. So they were terribly oppressed and could not really grow. They were just on the verge of starvation. So uh, God comes down through the angel. There's, there are four traditions and uh, four groups that write the Old Testament. And one of the groups, one of the traditions is the Elohist. And God always appears in terms of angels because God is too awesome. We cannot uh, see God. And so the belief was that if you ever did see God, you would instantly die. So uh, God has to assure him that even though he's seen the angel, he's not going to die. So uh, he comes and says, Hail, O mighty champion. And what does Gideon do? The first thing he does is, yeah, 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 where's, where's God been? You know, he's just kind of left us here and we're uh, subject to these Midianites. You know, we hear about the glory of God, but we don't see much around here for that. So he starts complaining right away. The fact that he's not instantly struck dead is probably a sign of God's mercy. So uh, uh, the angel then as, uh, tells Gideon that he's going to become a, a, a mighty champion and lead Israel. I was checking the readings today, and we missed the, the, the story of the battle. Uh, the Midianites are encamped. There's a huge crowd of Midianites, uh, several thousand troops that are gathered there to begin the onslaught. Uh, and uh, Gideon goes to meet them with about uh, 10,000 troops, and God says, this is too many. You know, if you win the battle with 10,000 troops, you're going to think you did it. He said, uh, tell all the people that are afraid they can go home. So they go home, and he says, this is still too many. And he said, take them down to the river and watch how they drink. And I think the people that lap up their uh, water like a dog uh, versus the people who put it in their hands, because the people in their hands are looking around, they're, they're cautious. He said, pick those. So he ends up with 300 people. So they attack at night. They put torches uh, in pots so that the light is not seen, and they all have trumpets. And so they surround the Midian camp. They break out their lights and blow their trumpets, and the Midianites think it's a great army that has uh, descended upon them. And so they end up in the confusion. They end up basically killing each other. So uh, Gideon won, wins a great victory. But it's interesting as they describe the battle, they're going for the Lord and for Gideon. And by the time they get towards the end of the battle, it's for Gideon and the Lord. And so uh, Gomer here thinks he's a brilliant general. And so tomorrow we have the reading about he wants to be king. He wants to be ruler. 
And so um, there was a big conflict in Israel on whether or not they should have a king. They were ruled by judges, and they always saw God as their king. And so many of the kings in the ancient world were worshipped as God. So uh, to appoint a king was basically to dethrone God as, as head. So there was a, a strong opposition uh, against a king. So uh, you might remember that Samuel then is finally asked to anoint a king to be like the other nations so they can uh, finally stop the Philistines who uh, uh, are oppressing them. And so uh, Samuel reluctantly uh, appoints Saul as king. Turns out that the, basically the monarchy was a disaster uh, and uh, all the bad things that Samuel predicted to, that happen did happen. So tomorrow there's a, a wonderful little parable about the trees wanted someone to be a king and they ask the olives and say, I'm not going to give up my oil. And they ask the, the, the grape, well, I'm not going to give up my wine. And finally, the bramble bush says, yeah, I'll be your king. In other words, only the most disreputable people would want to be king. Sometimes I think our view of politics hasn't changed too much over the centuries. But at any rate, uh, we, you know, uh, 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 Aristotle used to say that politics was the most noble profession because it tried to implement the, uh, the common good. Uh, we've come a long way from that, I think. At any rate, uh, the angel then accepts the offering that uh, Gideon has offered. And uh, uh, Gideon says, oh, woe is me. Alas, I have seen God face to face. I'm going to die. And then the Lord says, be calm. Do not fear. You know that phrase, do not fear, appears over 360 times in the scriptures. God tells it to the people he appears to. Angels tell it. Prophets tell it. Uh, what, what does the angel say when he first appears to Mary? Do not be afraid. What does Jesus say when he first comes to the apostles after the resurrection? Do not be afraid. This is the constant uh, refrain in the Old and New Testament when people encounter God. Do not be afraid. Fear, perhaps, uh, is our greatest obstacle to spiritual growth. That's a whole nother homily in itself. But basically, uh, in, the, in the scripture view, uh, fear is one of the greatest obstacles we have to uh, growing closer to the Lord. At any rate, um, Gideon wins a great victory. And he's not smart enough to figure it out it wasn't because of his genius. It was because of the directions he received from the Lord. And so it's a, it's a wonderful uh, uh, allegory for uh, human beings that we're always, uh, you know, one step away from pride to think that somehow we've done it all ourselves. We come before the Lord today uh, realizing that uh, God asks us to do extraordinary things. Uh, like Gideon, we tend to be, who, me? You know, that tends to be the first response. Uh, you know, when God asks us to do something, who, me? You, you don't mean me, do you? And God, God chooses the most unlikely. In fact, the more unlikely the person is, the greater possibility there is that God chooses them. So as an, uh, unworthy that we all feel, uh, God still chooses us, but reminds us he is with us, and do not be afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Almighty Father, your grace transforms human weakness and perfects it. We saw in our feast yesterday of the Assumption, or uh, uh, Sunday of the Assumption of Mary, that you have uh, transformed human nature by the birth of your Son. Hear now the prayers we present before you. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop George Lucas, Bishop Conley, and Bishop Hannafeld, and for all leaders in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and for all who serve us in public office, that they will strive to work for the good of our nation, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, that they may experience the healing power of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may share in Christ's risen glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, and that we as a parish community will encourage our young men and women to consider a vocation to the priesthood or religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving to God for rain, for continued favorable weather throughout the summer months, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who have lost their homes, all through the natural disasters that happened to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Father Joe that he will be safe and be back shortly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us now pray and pause to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died, especially the priests of the Archdiocese who have died this summer. Father Mike Printy, Father Don Stortz, Father Eugene McReynolds, Monsignor Thomas Furlong, and Monsignor Mel Weezy. And for all those who have died of COVID and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray also for those that are sick. Uh, we pray especially for the priests who have significant health issues right now. Father Lloyd Gennert, Father Craig Lecker, Father Rod Kneifel, Father Dave Korth, Father Frank Lorderman, we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty and everlasting Father, help us avoid the conceit of Gideon that we believe that somehow we are the cause of the good in our life. Let it give us humility that we may always recognize your hand in the good things of our life. We ask this, Father, in the name of your Son, who lives with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts 
to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries may join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you we might love one another through your Son, who for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entrust you, we entreat you to earnestly to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to, uh, to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity 
and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, George our Bishop, and all bishops with the entire people. Just as you have gathered us together at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray now, stand now and pray to the Father as Jesus taught. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. A prayer to be merciful from St. Faustina. Help me, O Lord, that my eyes may be merciful, so that I may never suspect or judge from appearances, but look for what is beautiful in my neighbor's soul. Help me, O Lord, that my ears may be merciful, so that I may give heed to my neighbor's needs. Help me, O Lord, that my tongue may be merciful, that I may never speak negatively of my neighbor. Help me that my hands may be merciful and filled with good deeds, so that I may do only good for my neighbor. Help me, O Lord, that my feet may be merciful, so that I may hurry to assist my neighbor. Help me, O Lord, that my heart may be merciful, so that I myself may feel all the sufferings of my neighbor. May your mercy, O Lord, come upon me. Amen. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may also be his co-heirs in heaven, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. For our closing song, that's us uh, do 723, To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King. To Jesus Christ, our Sovereign King, who is the world's salvation? All praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, Victor, Christ Jesus, Ruler, Christ Jesus, Lord and Redeemer. Thy reign extend, O King benign, to every land and nation. For in thy kingdom, Lord divine, alone we find salvation. Christ Jesus, Victor, Christ Jesus, Ruler, Christ Jesus, Lord and Redeemer. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.